are well and ready for another story time so today I have a special request if you guys have a teddy bear at home or any favorite stuffed animal really I want you to grab it and hold on to it for story time because today's story time is all about bears so this is my teddy bear and you're probably wondering he looks kind of goofy, right? He's really old and he only has one eyeball and his nose is rubbed off. Well, this teddy bear is super duper old. This was my mom's teddy bear when she was a little tiny girl. So she gave it to me and now I have it. So he's my teddy bear and I'm gonna hold on to him today for our bear story time. So <clears throat> our first story time story today we're going to put Mr. Bear over here so he can listen to the books too, all about his friends. Is called Hibernation Hotel, and it is by John Kelly and illustrated by Laura Brunella. All right, let's see. Do you know what hibernation means? Hibernation is when some animals go to sleep during the winter time. So they save up all their energy and they sleep all winter until it's warm enough to come out in the spring. And bears are one of the animals that do that. So it was way past hibernation time, but bear just could not sleep. His cave, as usual, was much too crowded. Raccoon snored. <laughs> Beaver fidgeted, and Skunk, quite frankly, was a little bit smelly. I've had enough of being treated like a big furry mattress, Bear grumbled. So he got up, made a phone call, and booked a room at a fancy hotel. Ah, said Bear as he drove away, peace and quiet at last. The hotel was huge and fancy, just like the front desk clerk's mustache. Bear tried not to stare at it as he checked in. Look at his big old mustache. Would sound like a wake-up call, asked the front desk clerk. Yes, please, said, Mar said Bear. March 1st. It's a really long time. The bellman showed Bear to his room. It was bigger than his entire cave. Ah, this is the life, exclaimed Bear, bouncing up and down on the bed. And look at these snacks, Bear cheered. He didn't know which one to eat, so he ate them all. Then he washed everything down with a huge gulp of water. Bear used every bottle of shampoo and all of the hot water, too. 
Then he dried his fur, he brushed his teeth, and he flopped exhausted into bed. Perfect, he yawned. <gasps> As he closed his eyes and... Boom, biddy, boom, boom, thump, thump, thump. Didn't fall asleep. A party, groaned Bear. This is worse than raccoon snoring. He stomped down the hallway. Would you mind keeping the noise down? He growled ever so politely. I am trying to hibernate. The other guests were quick to quiet down, so Bear stumbled back to bed. But no matter how much he tried, Bear just could not sleep. Oh, he moaned. This bed is too squishy for a big bone bear. So he flung the blanket and pillows onto the floor and he crawled under them. Ah, toasty, sighed Bear, snuggling in. He grew toastier and then roastier until... Oh, no, he cried. Now I'm too hot. He threw off the blanket and the pillows and opened the window to let the cool night air ruffle his fur. Soon, Bear wasn't hot anymore, but he wasn't sleepy either. Maybe a little TV will help me sleep, he sighed, and he began to click through the channels. There was nothing on but wildlife shows, and for some reason, they made Bear feel sad. So he turned the TV off, and he flopped back into bed. Bear lay in the dark, wide awake and all alone. I just don't get it, he huffed. I'm in a luxurious bed with no snoring, fidgeting, or skunky smells, and I still can't sleep. Deep in the pit of Bear's tummy, there was a strange, hollow, empty feeling. And right then, Bear knew exactly why he couldn't sleep. I'm hungry, he howled. A bear can't be expected to sleep on an empty tummy. Bear called room service. I'd like to order the menu, please he said. All of it. A few minutes later, there was a knock on the door. The bellman wheeled in the cart. Bear licked his lips and lifted the largest cover. But instead of a fabulous feast, he found his furry friends. What are you doing here, bellowed Bear? We missed you, they cried. We can't get to sleep without you. Soon Bear was buried beneath a pile of his sleepy friends, and even though Raccoon snored, Beaver fidgeted, and Skunk was still a bit smelly, Bear didn't mind. He was finally fast asleep. The end. Is there anyone or anything that you can't sleep without? Maybe a favorite blanket, or a favorite stuffed animal, or maybe even your brother or sister. I can't sleep without my two dogs, Finn and Artie. They sleep with me every night, and I would not be able to sleep if they weren't there. All right. Would you like to sing a song with me? Okay. We're going to sing a song about a big brown bear, and it goes like this. Grr, grr, went the big brown bear one day. Grr, grr, went the big brown bear. Grr, grr, went the big brown bear one day, and they all went grr, grr, grr. But we know bears go huggy, huggy, hug, huggy, huggy, hug, huggy, huggy, hug. We know bears go huggy, huggy, hug, and they don't go grr, grr, grr. Let's try it again. Can you have, do you have your, your teddy bear or your special stuffed friend with you? Let's try again. Ready? I have a little brown bear. We'll call him a little brown bear instead. Grr, grr, went the little brown bear one day. Grr, grr, went the little brown bear. Grr, grr, went the little brown bear one day. And they all went grr, grr, grr. But we know bears say... Huggy, huggy, hug, huggy, huggy, hug, huggy, huggy, hug. We know bears say huggy, huggy, hug, and they don't say grr, grr, grr. All right. Did you like that one? I like that one because we got to hug our bears. Okay. I have a silly story called The Bear 
Who Stared by Duncan Beatty. Mm. There once was a bear who liked to stare and stare and stare. Every day, Bear emerged from his cave and stared at everything he saw. One morning, he stared at a family of ladybugs who were having their breakfast on a small leaf. What are you staring at? squeaked the ladybug. We're trying to have our breakfast in peace. And with that, they scuttled off to find somewhere else to eat. Bear strolled farther into the forest and climbed a big tree. He stared at a bird feeding her chicks in their nest. Can I help you? asked the bird. Bear didn't answer. He just stared. The chicks did not like Bear staring at them. They didn't want him watching while they ate their lunch. Go on, shoo, squawked the bird. Get down on the ground where you belong. Bear climbed back down to the forest floor where he spied a badger's burrow. He poked his head into the entrance and I'm sure you can guess what happened next. What do you think happened? Oh, stop gawking, barked the badger and he bit poor Bear on the nose. He was a particularly angry badger. Bear pulled his head from the badger's burrow with a pop and skulked off rubbing his sore nose. Before long, Bear found a log to sit on by a large green pond. He sat and he pondered by the pond. Do you know what pondered means? Pondered is a fancy word that means thought about. Bear didn't mean to annoy all the other animals. He was just naturally curious, but too shy to say anything. I've seen that look before, said a small croaky voice coming from the pond. Bear looked down and saw a plump little frog. Bear stared at the frog. The frog stared back with big googly eyes. Not much fun being stared at, is it? Said the frog. Hmm, I suppose not, muttered Bear. It's just that I don't know what to say to anyone and before I've had a chance to think, it's too late. Bear stared into the water and saw another bear staring back at him with the same wide, curious eyes. He looked just like Bear in every way, but this bear wobbled and was a strange green color. Then something extraordinary happened. The green bear blinked and his mouth turned into a smile, which turned into a big, happy grin. You see, said the frog, sometimes a smile is all you need. I may have big, googly, starey eyes, but I also have the widest smile in the whole forest. Then the frog showed Bear his biggest, widest, happiest smile before diving into the water. As the frog disappeared, so did the wobbly green bear. The next day, Bear trudged out of his cave. He saw the ladybug family enjoying their breakfast on a small leaf. The daddy ladybug was just about to gather up their things and leave when Bear said, Hello! with a big smile on his face. Oh, hello, said the ladybug, and she smiled back. Bear strolled happily off into the forest. Bear made lots of new friends that day, and he did not feel the need to stare. Although, he did have one new friend who didn't mind staring at him, and he, just, and he was just as good at staring back. That wasn't our silly green bear. That was Bear's reflection in the water. Did you like that story? That was a silly story, huh? The bear who stared. All right, should we sing another song? Let's try another rhyme. You have your teddy bears? Okay, here we go, ready? We're gonna hug our bear, ready? Hug, hug, hug your bear, squeeze him very tight. Hold him high and help him fly, then hug with all your might. Hug, hug, Hug your bear, squeeze him very tight. Hold him high and help him fly, then hug with all your might. Did you give a good squeeze? Oh, I love to give good squeezes to my teddy. Okay, now we have 
a book about a bear who is scared. Are you ready? Oh, I wonder why he's scared. This is Bear's Scare by Jacob Grant. Can you tell why he might be scared? Is that a spider? Do you think that could be what's scaring him? I don't know, let's see. Bear was sure of many things. He was sure that his house was clean. He was sure that his rooms were tidy. He was certainly sure that he took very good care of everything inside. There was one thing Bear loved to care for most of all, a small stuffed friend named Ursa. They were always together. Mr. Bear has a stuffed teddy bear. Each day, Bear and Ursa cleaned the house high and low. They cleaned inside and out. It was on such a day that Bear found something odd. That's funny, said Bear. I am sure I didn't leave any books out. Hmm. When Bear looked closer, he saw something not funny at all. <gasps> Do you see it? What is that? Bear tried to keep calm, but the more he searched, the more messy webs he found. Ursa. We have a spider problem, said Bear. I am sure the spider is covering our home with more sticky webs. I am sure the spider is making a giant mess with its many legs. I am certainly sure the spider is nothing like us, said Bear. Ursa, we must find this messy guest. Bear and Ursa searched high and low they searched inside and out, but they did not find any spiders. Do you see any spiders? Where are they? <gasps> he didn't see her. This spider is extra sneaky, but it cannot hide from us, said Bear. He sprang up to continue the search when something terrible happened. <gasps> Can you find the spider in this picture? Do you see her? She's right there. Uh-oh, what happened? <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Do you see what happened? <gasps> oh, this is not good. Bear lay there for some time. <gasps> My poor friend! I never meant to make such a mess! Once again, Bear searched high and low. He searched inside and out. He had to find a way to help his friend. When Bear returned, he could not believe what he saw. His dear Ursa was good as new. What? How did that happen? Do you know? There among the books, Bear found something he never expected. He did not mind the spider's sticky webs. He did not mind the spider's many legs. Look at the spider has its own little house in Bear's house. I certainly do not mind sharing my home with one more friend. And that was something that Bear could be sure of. Oh, look how nice that is. Now he had another friend who turned out to be very helpful, didn't she? Did you like that one? I like that one. Okay, <clears throat> you ready for another song? We're learning so many Bear songs today. This song is about some different kinds of bears. Can you think of different kinds of bears that you know? Maybe you went to the zoo and saw some bears. What kinds of bears did you see there? Can you think about it? Think about it? Okay, let's see if any of the ones that you thought of turn it up in our song. Okay, ready? Grizzly bears are big and brown, big and brown, big and brown. Grizzly bears are big and brown and they live in the what? woods. You're right. Who else? How about polar bears are soft and white, soft and white, soft and white. Polar bears are soft and white and live where it is cold. Good job. Teddy bears are just my size, just my size, 
just my size. Teddy bears are just my size to cuddle with at night. Can we try it again? Ready? Grizzly bears are big and brown, big and brown, big and brown. Grizzly bears are big and brown and they live in the woods. Polar bears are soft and white, soft and white, soft and white. Polar bears are soft and white and they live where it's cold. Teddy bears are just my size, just my size, just my size. Teddy bears are just my size to cuddle with that night. Good job. Now, speaking of cuddling and nighttime, I have our last story, which is about a very sleepy bear. This is called Sleepyhead Bear and it is by Lisa Westberg Peters, and the pictures are by Ian Schoenherr. All right, this is a, definitely a good story to cuddle your bear with. Under sizzling skies with hot air to spare, bear tries to catch a few winks in his lair. A bug buzzes here, bzzz. A bug buzzes there, bzzz. Poor little ready for bed, sleepy head bear. He tries to look tall and he growls, Grrr! but the bugs aren't afraid and they buzz in his fur. Bear jumps in the lake and he swims till he's sure that the big bugs and small bugs won't find him. Grrr. Swat, swat here. Slap, slap there, poor little dog paddling, frog scattering bear. Oh, he looks, he's really trying to be scary. He climbs up a tree, but he doesn't get far because this is the tree where the stinging bugs are. <gasps> stay away, baby bear, stay away. He discovers a place to hide, but four raccoons won't budge until bear says, Roar! Raccoons flying here, raccoons flying there. Poor little stuck inside, a bit too wide bear. Uh-oh, he's stuck in the log. I hope, oh no, those bees are near his bum. Uh-oh. The log starts to roll down a hill and it's clear that bear is going for a ride. Oh dear! The log turns around and around before, Bear is tossed out, dizzy and sore. He lands in a meadow, poor little bear, has bumps on his head, bumps everywhere. Too tired to climb up and fall down anymore, he lets out a squeaky growl and roar. Where are the bugs? Did they disappear? Maybe there aren't any bugs down here, just flowers. All of a sudden, bear is a blur with bugs that don't buzz or sting or whir. Flutter and dip, flutter and stir, bugs on his nose, bugs on his fur. They tickle away his growl and his roar. They tickle him till he forgets that he's sore. Bear stands up straight like a furry brown flower. His new friends visit him hour after hour. Oh my goodness, look at all those butterflies. Under soft summer skies with stars galore, a warm, breezy, a warm breeze carries the hint of a snore. Oh, he's getting sleepy. Nodding off here, nodding off there. Dear little fast asleep, at last asleep there. The end. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed story time today and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We have lots of awesome story times planned for next week, including dinosaurs and mermaids and mm, I can't tell you, it's a secret. There are so many good story times next week. So stay tuned and be sure to follow 
um, us here on Facebook for more updates. I'm still taking uh, I'm still taking art submissions too. <laughs> so make sure that you um, send those in to me by next Wednesday, April 1st. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Miss Megan Moon and at YouTube at Miss Megan Moon and at Instagram, Miss Megan Moon. And you can see all of the cool stuff that we're still doing through the library and catch up on anything that you may have missed. We've got science videos and art videos and all kinds of stuff going on. Um, we are not stopping, that is for sure. We're not slowing down at all. So I can't wait to see you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. the teddy bear.